Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel today. My mom and I are gonna show you how we flip a $20 thrifted dresser into a beautiful fancy find. Are you yeah, ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. Alright, so I'm at my mom's house this week, and you know what that means? She's got a giant list of stuff she wants me to do for her. Have to have, have some <laughs> help, you know. <laughs> Alright, what do you got here, Mom? I bought this uh, on Marketplace. It's just a little French uh, provincial nightstand. And I need a nightstand for my new bedroom makeover, guest room makeover. D Selena, I don't have any guest ever. Selena makeover room. Guest of honor. Yes, the bottom right room, and it, I bought it for twenty dollars on Marketplace, and we're gonna redo it because the top of it's kind of scratched up, or the people put a looks like a cup of coffee or something, or spilt something all over it. So we're gonna sand it all off and um, paint it. We're planning on doing it like more of like an heirloom white kind of antiquey look. So today I'm gonna show you how I painted our huge bed in our bedroom that really pretty antique white and I did an antique wax over it and that gold gilding. It's really, really easy to do and you just need a few things to do it. So we're gonna make over this $20 dresser that my mom scored to make it look so fancy. We're gonna make it into a $100 dresser. Yeah, are you excited? <laughs> Yep, I'm excited. All right, let's do the thing. Yeah, I'm taking the thing. All right, mom is excited for power tools. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just got a little hand sander here and these are great for small furniture refinishing projects. I especially loved one of these sanders when I had my antique booth and I was doing a lot of painting and stuff. And for something like this, since we're gonna be doing a painted finish, we're gonna sand this down a little bit here and just kind of scuff up the surface so we have a nice get surface. The gloss, get the gloss off. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna get all the gloss off and then we're gonna give it a good prime. So mom's gonna blast away with the sander, get ready. So it's important when you're gonna be painting anything that has like a glossy finish or a smooth kind of finish over it that you grime it and get it like a really good surface to grip it. I always think like, say when you go get a pedicure, you know they always like buff over your fingernails and then they do their base coat before they actually put the polish on. It's kind of the same concept, right? You'll see that my mom and I went over it with the hand sander um, and then we also have a little sanding block and just sand paper so you can really get in there. You're, we're not looking to take the entire finish down on this piece but just looking to give it a little bit of a grip surface to um, stick to. So this is the step you definitely want to do before you do your primer. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and sand over the drawer. This is our last little piece here. And then after we do that, you just want to wipe it down with a microfiber towel or like an old washcloth or t-shirt or something. You get these like microfiber towels at the dollar store and they work really, really good for picking up all of the grit and dust left over from sanding. So we're going to wipe this down. Then you just go over it with another damp cloth to get any of that other residue before you put any paint on top. It's good when you're sanding to go in the direction of the grain of the wood. So this goes like this way. So I'm not gonna go like this with the sandpaper. I'm gonna go the length of the thing. That way you don't, it looks more natural when you paint and things.
All right, so our next step on this baby is a little bit of primer. We're just gonna make it easy today because we're excited. We wanna yeah. get to the fun part, right? We wanna paint. I know. So uh, I brought some primer in a spray paint form. So much easier. You could also use something like Kills um, to give it some grip too, but we just wanna hurry up, like I said. So right. let's just give this a quick spray of primer and hop to it, all hop right? To it. <laughs> We're using an interior semi-gloss paint or satin, and um, you can use any kind of interior paint if you're painting some kind of furniture piece. Uh, this color here, I always get a lot of questions on, and it was a custom mixed paint that we have all over the trim in our house, and it's kind of like an heirloom white or van like creamy vanilla bean kind of color. Um, it's really beautiful if you're wanting to do more of an antique type of look. Um, so you can go to the uh, paint store and any kind of off-white or ivory color would look really beautiful. And then after this, we're going to do an antique wax over it, which will even like further, you know, the depth and antique. And it looks especially beautiful when you have pieces like this that have like little carved details in them. It helps to kind of like enhance it and make it look even cooler. <laughs> Excited about your little project? Yeah. But you're getting drippy over here, Mom. It's not going to show, is it? Yeah, just tap it like that. Well, when you pull the drawer out, it will. Oh, now you're painting on the side. No. Let me show them a little trick that I do. Like, see how my mom just painted on the side there? Oh. See how she messed that up? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, Whoops. Yeah, so to avoid doing something like that, if you use the side part of your brush, like the big fat part, and you paint like this, just straight She didn't tell up. me that. Well, I thought you knew that. No, you didn't teach me. No. Yeah, just straight up. If, if she would have done that here on the side, you could have avoided that on the lid. Yeah. Thanks. A little pro tip. Pro tip when the <laughs> amateur just got done. <laughs> what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> you got the what not to do and what the pro way to do. Yeah, if you just do it straight up and down like that, and then if you tilt this drawer and you look on the inside, didn't even get it on the inside of the drawer, baby. I, I flipped a lot of furniture pieces in my day. These, I I keep them. I don't flip them. <laughs> this used to be like my bread and butter when I had the antique booth. I used to like chalk paint stuff. I find things at garage sales all the time. And like I'd spend all day painting them on my patio and then like go flip them in my antique booth. And you get like the phone call. You're like, hey, your dresser just sold in your booth. Like come bring more furniture. It's like, woo! <laughs> yeah. So anyways, all those little like tricks like that like help yeah you, you didn't tell me that trick save some time you know uh oh got a finger it looks like somebody's finger went there probably yours not me not mine not on, not on my hand not on my hands probably on your pants oh uh, yeah these are my paint pants though we're probably going to be doing two coats of paint on here uh just to get some nice finish on it and it also helps like knock down the brush marks a little bit but it's a nice day outside. It just feels good to out, be out in the fresh air again. Oh, I brought some old wallpaper with me today too. So we're gonna be lining the drawer in like a really pretty wallpaper. I love to look for old papers at garage sales. It seems like everyone always has like half a roll left from a wallpaper project. So if you ever see that, just snap it up if there's like a pretty print and you're like, oh, there's not enough to do a wall or whatever, but for things like drawers or say your bathroom drawers or the back of a closet, it's always really, really beautiful to have like a fun pattern in there. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Make this 
a little pop of fun when you open up the drawer. <laughs> I'm all messed up. You can put a piece of duct tape there. At least you'll have a straight line when in repaint it where you have a straight line. Oh, yeah. I guess that would be better. Better than or no jig jagging. you could paint the whole side. Nah, I'd do that. You're just going to do that a little bit? Yeah, it's only not going to show. All right. Maybe that will look better. Better than jig jaggy. But now, you know, in the future, I know. to do the little trick I showed you at the side. Show everyone how you got a straight See? line. Then, and now when you take this off, whoops, if I can find the end. Looks a lot better. Wow. That was that end. That is better than a jig jaggy jig line. Jaggy. <laughs> so it got pretty cold as the afternoon went on and we brought the dresser inside so the paint could set up. And now I'm about to do the fun part of the gilding. So you wanna make sure that you do either the gilding by itself like this, or you're extremely careful when you put like the stained wax on it because the stained wax can actually like wipe off your gilding like a clean slate. Um, so I'm gonna go in with that and then we'll carefully do the waxing around that. And I'm gonna put my mom on wallpaper duty for the drawer. We had this cool wallpaper that I mentioned earlier. Here comes mom. <laughs> yeah, with beautiful parrots on it. So I put the paper upside down then I put my drawer on there Oh, you have a, a way of doing this. Well, I get a pattern. Oh, okay. Because I still have to trim. But I won't have to trim so much off. That's a good way to do it. I've never done it like that. You taught me a tip and I taught I you one. <laughs> <laughs> then oh, I cool. just cut it out. real process, somebody would be holding down the paper for oh, you. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It was a lot better if somebody holds down the paper. But if you don't have someone, you can always do like I did. I lift it under a rug. <laughs> I'm here now. Yeah, now she's here. What were you thinking about? You just <laughs> I just stopped. I was like, am I on the right line? <laughs> Now, you, then you cross your fingers, you cut the right place. Still got to cut trim, because you're major, I measured the outside part, so I still got to trim off, but it's not as much. Then you just lay it in there and you push it down, and then you'll get like a, use your pencil again. You can go to, with a box cutter. Yeah, a box cutter would be nice. Yeah. Or you just get your line. I just press it against it and I get my line. Am I, is this where I'm supposed to help you again? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> I, it, you get your line. You could use a box cutter. It's really easy then if you had that, but I didn't get one. Oh, you're excited on there that you last go. one. There you go. Wow. Whoops, could have shit off. Didn't send, my, <laughs> didn't send her my picture. <laughs> she cut the parrot's head off. But still There's going to have junk in there, and you won't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then when, you get, when you're totally done, you get a nice wet, kind of real wet washcloth, and you... Just kind of put it in a little bit on the back of the paper and it'll all stick it down. Yeah, or a mist bottle. Or a mist bottle. I just use a microfiber towel that was warm water. Cool. Oh, you know what would be fun too? If you put a little... Did like, you show inside? You could do a little essential oil so it's like a scented drawer liner. Wouldn't that be fun? Ooh, that should be pretty. Even though you cut his head off. You won't tell. Yeah, <laughs> we'll put lots of junk in there. <laughs> I use my favorite stuff. I love Rub and Buff. I've been using this for years. It was actually one of my favorite products to use when I had my antique booth and I was telling you I used to flip furniture because it's really awesome to use on hardware too. And it's just like the prettiest, like real gold gilding. This is the one called Gold Leaf. I also really like the Grecian gold too. Um, you can find this on Amazon. There's like a really good, uh, like variety pack where you get all kinds of colors on there. You can get all these different silvers or even coppered patina greens and different shades of gold. So it's, it's so fun and one tube goes a long way. But as you see, I'm gonna be working out of the tube because if you smear like a blob on top of, you know, any kind of like uh, paint easel or something like that to paint with, it dries really, really quickly. Uh, so I don't want to waste any product. So what we need to do is figure out exactly where I want to gild. So I'm going to like highlight some of this, these lines here that kind of sweep around the legs and then this bevel here along the top I think will look really, really pretty and kind of give it more of a French look.
my uh, tip for um, painting is when you're painting a project, a wall, a piece of furniture, or even outside trim or something, and I always put, save it, old pill bottles, and I put like this as nightstand, so I'll know the color of the paint there, and just in case I nick it or something, I have a little dab of paint to repair it with. I do that for all my inside walls too, because I'm always hanging pictures and things, and then I can fill in the hole, and I'll always have the paint to cover up the hole. That's my tip. 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 <laughs> <laughs> See, Heloise has got nothing on my mama. <laughs> um, so I finished off all of the gilding and I was just going to show you quickly what it looked like. We decided not to do like the top rim of the dresser, which I'm actually happy about because I think that would be pretty hard with, with the little brushes that I had at least. But yeah, got this all lined up. I think it's looking pretty Frenchy now. This is really tough to do this kind of pinstriping, so I'm gonna say it's more of like a rustic kind of Frenchy style. I'm gonna go in here now with some of the Howard stained wax. That's another favorite product of mine if you love to refinish furniture, or if you just have like natural wood furniture, it's amazing at bringing like the natural luster of the wood and kind of oiling it and reviving it, bringing it back to life. But in this case, if you want to further antique this dresser, like we could leave it as is, it looks really beautiful, but my mom loves it when I do like the waxed finish on things. So you can usually find this at like Home Depot or Lowe's and one can like this, I've had this for like three years, you hardly use any product because the key to having this uh, more antique look is this like minimal, it almost gives like kind of like a tea stained look. And if you use too much of the wax, it'll start to like ball up on the finish and you'll get kind of like an uneven like muddy look to it um, but we're just gonna kind of mute down the white a little bit and add even more of like an antique look so let's get waxing away my dad gave me an old sock to use for his project and that's the truth wow <laughs> thanks dad um, so you can use a wax brush like I have here these are kind of expensive I think they're like 30 or 40 dollars but if you're gonna be doing this a lot um, it's worth the investment I think and I just have one in my toolkit that I've had for years but you don't have to have one before I had one of these wax brushes I just used like a piece of an old t-shirt or like an old sock like this but in this case I'm gonna use both just to kind of um, wipe any away if I get a little too much of an uneven finish or a little much too, too much product in one area, I can kind of whisk this away as I'm working. So let's pop open this can and I'll show you what this looks like and we'll get started. All right, so I'm using the walnut color. I also really like the mahogany if you want a little more of a warmer color, but this walnut's kind of like a middle of the road, dark kind of tea type color, but you can see like I've hit the bottom of the pan on this one, but there's so much product around the rim. And like I said, I've had this for like three years. So these cans last a really long time. So with the wax brush, you just kind of dapple it on top of the bristles here. And the larger brush you use, it's wonderful for larger paint projects. Otherwise you can just use like one of those, even those like Kabuki makeup brushes that are flat top. Like the goal is just to get a lot of product on your brush. So you just dabble it on like this and you just kind of quickly brush it over and it just mutes down whatever color you're using. I'm being really careful not to get it on the gilded parts that I've done here because it will literally just wipe them off. But that's also a good thing. So if you've made a mistake somewhere, or you've gotten the rub and buff somewhere you don't want it, a clear wax will just wipe off any of your mistakes, kind of like an eraser. So you can dapple this on and you just kind of brush it where you want it. I'll just do this front panel real quick. And then if you take just a plain rag, see all these little bits that are kind of like uneven and stuff? You just give it a gentle wipe. And here you can see the difference. It's a little more toned down as compared to over here. It just mutes the color a little bit. And you can also build the wax. So if you want to go even darker or like some of the projects I've worked on, if you get the wax into these grooves rather than gilding, it also gives like a really, really cool look and brings out any kind of carving that you might have in a furniture piece too. It's such a fun product to work with and it's not messy like a lot of waxes uh, or a lot of stains tend to be. Like if you get a gel wax or a liquid, liquid stain, um, they're just super messy. I, I just really love the wax versions of these. They're really easy to work with like virtually no cleanup. 
It's an awesome product. I was just showing my mom this little trick. She's like, you gotta show everybody else. So see this fine line right here that um, is going along the gilding? That same paint trick that I was showing you when you, should, when you paint like the side of a drawer, like using the side of your brush, I'm just flicking the um, wax brush like this. See that is starting to build up and give more of an antique look, but it's not going, I'm not going like straight up and down inside where I have any of the gilding because remember that's gonna uh, wipe it away. So just keep building. If you wanna go dark, 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 you just keep rubbing that brush over in different directions like that and it's gonna build up that wax finish for you and give you almost like a bit, of, I guess it's a low light, not a highlight, but um, it'll bring out that detail there. And then to get rid of any kind of build up, just, just real lightly with your uh, cloth or sock or anything to get on there. You see, just kind of gives a nice little look there. I think I wiped away a little bit, but you can just go right back over it. So it's important when you're uh, waxing things too, as awesome as this looks, and you're like, oh, I want to put my lamp on it or whatever, just let this set up overnight. I think they say like six to eight hours this wax will set up and kind of create more of a, like a harder shell. Um, but I would just let it sit overnight because it's kind of, it's tacky, you know, it's like a wax. It's really, really soft. So just let it do its thing and then tomorrow you can decorate. All right, so we're gonna be waxing this bed that my mom found on Facebook Marketplace. Guy that ha had it, had it in his um, shop area out in the garage and by the lawnmowers. And his wife bought it and she didn't like the color after it came and didn't wanna pay to ship it back. So it was sitting in their shop area for like two years, he said. And he finally said he had enough and got rid of it. So I scored. How much did you pay? I paid 150 for it. Yeah, I looked online. I was trying to Google image this bed, and I found ones for around a thousand. Like, wow. I'm, I'm pretty sure like it's the same bed. Like it's this, he it's heavy. It's yeah. not press board. This is wood, <laughs> and it's heavy. It's like it took me a scooter board and some rugs, upside down rugs. That that's a tip on moving furniture if it's too heavy for you. Put it on and get one of your throw rugs and flip it upside down where the um, pretty sides down. And then it'll scoot across the floor. You can stick one end on it and use it like a wheelbarrow. Just slide it. And slide yeah. it. That's what I did this because this was too heavy for me to move. And Selena's dad can't lift things right now. His back's out. So Yeah, that's a good way to do it when you're by so yourself. I, yeah, I thought this was really pretty. And Selena's going to kind of do that antique -y look on the um, carvings and everything here. And, it, and it's white. It, I, I have a tendency to go everything dark because I'm more of the, I like my bedroom dark. And Selena is more of the feminine, light color <laughs> person. My my colors are dark mahogany like like and a stuff cave. like that. Mom likes yeah. her bedroom like a cave, and I like mine all light and airy. Yeah, I like mine. I don't like to see daylight at all. I don't even <laughs> want to know when it's daylight when it's in the morning. I get, I wake up when I want to wake up. <laughs> we call her Mole Mom. <laughs> I can go around the whole house without turning the light on because I know where all my stuff is. <laughs> Selena's like one room to another turning lights and her dad does the same thing and I'm like, oh, turn them all off. I'm fine. I put one night light in the bathroom just so I can find where I'm going in there. Mole mom. Mole mom. <laughs> <laughs> so this bed, we love the color of it, but I don't know if you can see on video, it has like a pearl sheen, which yeah. is super pretty, but um, we're going to antique it a little bit. So adding that dark mm -hmm. wax will, you know, do you want me to go over this so it gets in the grooves? Do you want that? Yeah, what do you think? You know, I like that look. I think that look looks great and like yeah. on here, maybe not here, maybe as much. But not super heavy, but just a little yeah. bit. Just to make it detail. Yeah. 
What about furniture, Mom? When did you like first start refinishing furniture? I did furniture a lot in time because we, I always bought used furniture. I've never, I think I've only had one new couch in my whole life. So when you asked how did I learn about refinishing furniture and all this stuff, it's from Mom. <laughs> I remember, like, I remember when I was little, like, we went to this estate sale that was, like, right up the road, and you got this old chair there, and it was, like, summertime, and I remember you sitting on the porch, and yep. it was, like, the one that you, like, upholstered, and you put the little fringe on the yep. bottom, and you, like, refinished the wood. Yep, I used to do it right on, you'd be playing in the front yard, and I'd just sit on the front porch, and do yeah. the furniture just work on garage sale yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. like i remember like carrying this that big old chair home with, yeah. like down the road with you yeah. <laughs> you're like i got it for five dollars five dollars <laughs> i'm gonna make it a hundred dollar chair yeah <laughs> always had that had that fun and it was always fun to get used because you could make it what color you wanted that that's what i always like make it custom custom so I'm, I'm just getting ready to wax the bed. And what you guys don't see is the audience I have over here. We've got my mom over here on I'm the working. right corner. And my dad just peek, peeking around the hall. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're being the bosses. Yeah. <laughs> it's called supervising for yeah. a reason. <laughs> and here's my boy here. He, he, he's ready to keep supervising too. Oh, Hi, Jeremy. All right, I'm using my favorite stained wax. This can, like I told you, I've had it for like three years. They used to sell it at Home, Home Depot. I don't know if they still have it there or not. I'll try and find it online and I'll link it down in the description for you, but you'll love this. Like if you like to refinish pieces from garage sales and thrift stores, this stuff is just like gold and it smells like citrus. It's so yummy. Um, so I have the old sock. Hopefully dad washed it before he gave it to me. <laughs> I don't know. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wax brush so that's those are the only tools I'm gonna use uh, for this DIY so uh, we were saying how much we liked this finish but you can kind of see here in the uh, sunlight it does have kind of a pearl sheen to it and we just kind of want to tone it down a little bit it's beautiful but not really like the like aged kind of cottagey look that we want uh, so I'm just gonna go in real lightly with some wax and mom wanted me to see if I could go in here on some of these detail bits and just get a little more wax grab in there to kind of uh, bring out the carving. So that's an awesome way to do it is by building up the wax in there, which I'll show you in just a bit. So you don't need a lot on your brushes, kind of tap it around. You can see how much I have left in here. So three years and I still have a ton of wax on the sides, but you just kind of like tap it on your project, just like spread it kind of around. Spread it kind of around a little bit and smear it. The one thing I'm a little bit nervous about with this is the sheen on here because it has a little bit of a gloss sheen. So I'm hoping that the wax sets up nicely. Uh, usually a lot of ladies use this kind of like wax technique over top of chalk paint or if you have like a flat or a satin paint, works really well for that. This bed's gonna look just like mine at home, I feel like. Like see how it's grabbing in the corners. So yeah, if you want it to build up, you can end your brush stroke like at the corner. Like see how it's like picking up that. So you can see this line here is what I was talking about with the wax kind of just grabbing in there. It's super awesome if you have any kind of furniture pieces that you're redoing that have imperfections in them because uh, it just kind of it helps blend it. It looks like the imperfection was on purpose rather than you know, like if you have a crack in a piece of furniture and you might think it looks junky, it makes it look extra special. So that's what I do to kind of get things antiquing. And right now it probably looks just like a mess, but if you go in with your sock or just like an old washcloth or um, old sheets, you can just cut up a little piece of an old t-shirt, anything will do. And you just kind of wipe it away a little bit. So what it's looking like, Mom, is this sheen isn't really holding the wax very much but it is getting in the corners if you like that do you like that look look at the two panels side by side mm, no i don't think so i can just do a quick wax and then go over it um, on the carved details too and on the big panels yeah do that but the this flat part is just wiping right off it's not grabbing on yeah it. i just go around the edges in and the card part that's okay we gotta have a change of plans and that's all right we gotta adapt to things 
supervisor request <laughs> that uh, I just go around on the fancy car parts, which is fine with me because this will probably take me like 30 minutes to be really fast to do. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. If you're going over something glossy, this wax is probably not going to stick, but I think we can still get a really cool look with this. Right, let's cross our fingers. See, that's the thing. You can't act like a know-it-all about this stuff because it might not always go how you want it to. <laughs> but what I do know is it's going to be gorgeous. Come on. Yeah, even if it don't stick, we tried it at least, you know. I just like the little antique looker better than new. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Two years new is too new for me. That's almost like buying it brand new. <laughs> oh, you got such a good deal on this bed. That was exciting. Yeah. How's that sticking? Oh, I think that's gonna look really nice, Mom. Ooh, yay. Do you like that? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's stuck on there. That looks pretty like that. Kind of makes it pop a little more. Yeah. Than just blending in with the white. I think that looks good, Mom. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that looks better. I'm gonna do it in the panels, too, because I did it right here. Looks, It looks really similar to my bed at home. A home away from home. Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks a lot better. Do you like it? Yeah. Cool. Because I'm looking over here and seeing the, how Yeah, this, you can mm -hmm. see the difference now. Mm -hmm. Love how the bed turned out and Slim did that little bit of waxing, the dark wax, and it kind of detailed this instead of being all pearl white. It kind of made this, the little flowers and carvings turn out. It's not a lot difference but it's a nice subtle difference where you could actually de uh, detailed it mm -hmm. so if you don't want like a pop of color just want a nice subtle thing that wax is great stuff but just remember like i was showing you in the diy if you have something that has a glossy finish yeah probably not gonna stick but um i just kind of like rolled with the punches i guess um and worked that wax just into these carvy bits we were kind of tired after painting the d yeah. or the nightstand and stuff um so it was really perfect just to kind of work this into the grooves here and then on all the carvy bits it turned out exactly like what we were looking for and then the nightstand that was a really easy one we that was I think, real easy if you ever want to do a nightstand yeah they were I, real easy if this was summertime mom and it was sunny we would have this done in like one day one like, probably a done. couple hours it would have been yeah done. but this just turned out really fun and i like that um i did like the gold trimming on it makes it look a little more frenchy and then mom also added that fun pop of wallpaper mm -hmm. on the interior Interior here just looks really pretty I always have like hand lotion or like the lip gloss in there stuff. yeah your remotes or what like what do you keep in your nightstand I think we all keep some you know what's super funny Clean nexus <laughs> you know what's funny that I was thinking about like hand lotion when yeah. I was little I, you'd always be like before you, when you get into bed you're like I have to put on my hand lotion I'm like why? I still do because I feel I take my rings off and that's like always grease up but I'd be like why are your hands all dry like, yeah, I was, yeah. I was a little kid young. Now with like, <laughs> yeah, a little kid with greasy hands and now I have dry hands, ha -ha. so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what it feels like now. <laughs> but it turned out awesome. We got that little shelf down at the bottom so mom could put books under there and or the, whatever she wants. She we added the fringe to the little lampshade. That oh yeah, that's in our that's in our other video. Yeah, that, that made that different looking though than just plain. Really. Yeah, turned out super cool, super cool. So $20 thrifted dresser. Mom got this bed for only 150 bucks. It's like a thousand dollar bed. Yep. I'd say we scored on this thrift yeah. flip. Thanks for hanging out with us yeah. today and we'll see you in the next video. Yep, thanks.